Joining me now, former Reagan economic advisor and co-author of the book, Trumponomics, Art Laffer. Hey, Art, the Trumponomics is really, really rocking. I'll get to, you, to that later, but uh, there's a sense, a, a growing sense that maybe China is willing to make some major concessions that they've never made before. Uh, and and we already this morning we heard from agriculture, the, the, you know, we heard from energy, uh, that they're making some big promises there. Soybeans are up 7% since December 27th. Are these the kind of signs that you think or suggest maybe this time we could get a real deal? They are signs, but you know, t honestly, Charles, I don't look at those signs so much. China desperately needs the U.S., and the U.S. desperately needs China. You know, without China, there is no Walmart, Charles, and without Walmart, there is no middle class or lower class prosperity. We really need China. We need their products. We need high quality, low cost products here in these markets, and they desperately need us. And this makes perfect sense for both countries to get together and make a really good deal for both countries. It'll be a win-win for everyone, and I'm just excited about it happening. And when it does, those markets are off to the spaceship. I mean, it'll be just incredibly good for everyone. I, I don't disagree with that, although I think there might be some changing in thinking in classic economics in terms of, you know, the importance of cheap prices if they come at the expense potentially of jobs. Uh, and that's what this boils down to, right? Both sides are looking at each other, saying, hey, you need me is more than I need you, and whether we can weather this storm. But it feels like, at least with the economic data coming out of China, it's tilted the hand toward President Trump and his negotiating team. Uh, and if that is indeed the case, how do you see a deal potentially looking? Well, I think their negotiating team is great. I mean, as you know, Larry Kudlow, I think, is one of the best economists ever to serve in government, and I think he's just spectacular, and I think he really serves our president very, very well. I, I know the others in that team as well. They're all good as well, but I know Larry better than anyone, and he's just phenomenal. But I don't—I do not believe this is about jobs. Uh, if it were about jobs, uh, you would have all no barriers to trade anywhere in the world, and you'd have the greatest job market ever. Whenever we have moved protectionists in the U.S. or other countries have moved protectionists, it has cost jobs. Even though they all claim they're trying to protect jobs, they don't. Free trade is the best way to have the most number of jobs and the highest quality products and the best standard of living and rising real wages. But other than that, it's not a very good, very <laughs> good thing. Although, you got to admit, China did pretty good with the highest tariffs in the world and protectionism. They went from well, a, an economy where Sally Struthers was begging us at late night TV to send a couple of quarters to the second largest economy in the world. Yeah, but let me just say that China went from autarky, no trade at all. I was there in China in 1970, uh, just when they started the really the new development. They had no trade whatsoever. They have become a freer and freer and freer trade nation as well. Huge tax cuts, sound money. I mean, they are the classic supply side country of the world coming back in. Yes, their tariffs and their protectionism is still very high, but much, much lower than it has been. And all we need to do is get them to lower it even further so they're being right. more prosperous. In China. All right, before I let you go, uh, Sony yeah. overnight said if the tariffs go to 25%, they're going to move production out of China. Avery Dennison has said this. Canada National Railway said this. Pent Air, Logitech, Linux, Philips, Acme, Skechers, the Tile Shop, Granger. I mean, China has to understand, too, that they're in a precarious situation because there are growing oh. options with respect to, re to re re uh, replacing or removing the supply chain. Oh, well, there's no question our tariffs on Chinese products will hurt their economy a lot. Their markets are way down, Charles. I think they're down 40-plus percent. Their growth rates are way down. They can ill afford a trade war with the United States or anyone. Uh, but that's not the real thing. We want to have prosperity in this world and not beat them into the ground. China is not our enemy. They are our best trading partner in the world. And what we want them to do is lower those tariffs a lot so we can both prosper even more. And Trump has made that very, very okay. clear. He's a free trader, and this is the only leverage he has in these countries. And he's going to use that leverage to get better trade deals and get it better for America and for China. Absolutely. It's, it's a win-win for everyone, Charles. Hey, we, we want him to open Open up that market, right? We don't want yes, them to, sir. We don't want yes, their economy sir. to slip. We just want a, big, a bigger piece of the action. All right. I, and for them, too, by the way, it's all for good. All right. Always great talking to you. See you soon. You're the best, Charles. Thank <laughs> you very much.